Hello and welcome to another episode of The Hollywood Knitter. My name is Allison. I will be your host. Uh, you can find me as Allison1031 on Instagram and Ravelry. I am recording from my home in Los Angeles, California in a slightly different spot than usual. It is Sunday, January 5th, 2020. Happy 2020! And uh, the boyfriend is home downstairs in my normal recording area and I didn't want to kick him out so I thought I would find another spot so I'm in our spare room which houses our lizard, the spare bed that like my niece slept in, and then really um, the video game systems. So we have a TV in here and the video game systems like that. So when he wants to play video games he's in here and then I have some random stuff here and there. Sort of just a catch-all room, not my favorite. I kind of want to make it more functional per se, but on the other hand, it doesn't need to be because I don't really need it. It's just, it hurts me to have space that's not as utilized as it could be. Anyways, so I am here. Happy 2020. As I said, I hope everyone had a wonderful new year. I had a great new year. This is my last day being off from work. I go back to work tomorrow after oh, a week, more than a week almost two weeks. I guess it's been almost two weeks. It goes by so fast and I could very easily stay off work, but I must go back. So today I'm going to share with you my whips, my FOs, as well as kind of a recap of 2019 and kind of some talk of my 2020 knitting goals and other other information and then touch upon, you know, my niece's trip here and as well as some of my upcoming travels. So let's get started with FOs. Let's start with my longest FO, which is the All About Brio Shawl by Lisa Hands. And it's done. Oh, look at it. It is Leading Men Fiber Arts in their Fall Foliage and their Dipping Dots colorway. The, it is their show stealer. So it says 801010. And this is just a simple shawl that you start at the tip, has a really easy kind of increase to um, create kind of a, an elongated shawl, and then has a brio section. So you can see this is one side, and then on the other side, the yellow, and then into there. So this is actually a cooler section to kind of wear because it contrasts. And it is just so yummy. And it's so my colors. And I think I'm going to keep it... Um, it's squishy and warm and they make me happy. So, um, as I said, this is all about Brio Shawl by Lisa Hens. It is a paid pattern. Uh, I use fully all the two skeins, all of it up, except for a tiny, tiny bit. And I did that by actually increasing the Brio section by, I think a repeat on each one to use all of the yarn. And then I just kept going on the, the gold until I was done. And so pretty happy. This was in my queue for a while. This replaced a, a different shawl on my Make 9. It doesn't replace it, but instead of doing that shawl, I did this one um, and I'm pretty happy with it. So it is gonna go into my rotation um, to be wearing this winter. Might even actually bring it back with me. Um, I'm going somewhere cold in like two weeks. So I might bring this shawl to kind of be my scarf because it is just, it's such, it's so squishy. It's is so squishy that section so I finished that on the 21st and then I finished as my last FO of 2019 my fracture socks these are sensible sock 20 it's an 80 20 in fracture I don't remember where I picked this up but it's interesting to note like this is the same yarn this was the first sock I did and then this was the second so you can see this one is a lot darker and then a lot of that blue comes in. And that's just an example of the differences in, you know, indie dye yarn. There obviously uh, was a lot more blue at one end than the other, um, or just how it took. But luckily in socks, it doesn't matter. These are for the boyfriend. And I was inspired by the vanilla latte pattern to kind of do that, that broken rib just to give me a little something um, to keep me interested. And I do mine toe up. Uh, the other thing I had to note is I usually make the boyfriend socks a little taller and I had made them taller and I actually ran out of yarn on the second sock, which has not happened to me. And then I went back and I looked at the yardage and it is 400 yards. 
Usually I'm dealing with one that's like 420 and that extra 20, 25 yards apparently makes a difference. So I actually on the sock had to start ripping back and um, finish the top of this one and then kind of do it. So I actually had none left. So I, I ripped back on this one to come up to this one so that they were even. But I'm happy. It's another pair of socks for him. And it was my last FO, as I said, of 2019. And it did allow me to succeed and getting almost everything off my needles. Um, the only whips I have going on is I did a Christmas Eve cast on and I did the Flora socks by Hohi Locatelli. If you missed it, this was a little sock pattern, um, a little shorty sock pattern that she put out, I think the day or two before Christmas, um, to raise funds for the local group of women that she works with in Argentina and Buenos Aires. I think it's Buenos Aires. Um, it was a nominal five bucks or something. And so I thought it was a great pattern to buy as to support and help her raise money. And then would be a great little Christmas Eve cast on, um, to work on. And so I did that. Let me show you a picture of the pattern. I am really into shorties right now. I just really am. Um, I like wearing them, I think better than my other ones because I can wear them with my sneakers and things like that. So I'm into shorty socks. Now, there's nothing about the sock that I couldn't have done myself, but you know, it was it was supporting. So this is the Flores sock, um, by Ho as I said, by Hohi Locatelli. I actually have finished one sock. Uh, I didn't bring it on a sock blocker, but here's the little shorty. I used Wandering Wool, Wandering Wool, Wandering Wool, uh, Ossible sock, which is an 80-10-10 in the Knitting and the National Night. This was a sock I tried this, do the rookie socks I was going to do and I didn't like it and I ripped them back and since I already had it caked up I thought this would make a great little shorty so I finished one and I've just turned the heel on the other one and I'm starting to do the decreases on the gusset now I don't usually do mine top down I almost almost always do mine toe up so this was a little different um I almost feel like they're the tiniest bit too tight but I think that's because I like my socks a little looser feeling. If, I, I've been looking, I've been wearing a lot of socks in the last week, a lot of my socks, and I'm a little torn because when they go on my foot, they're perfect. But then shortly after wearing they stretch and then they're a little too loose. So I think I'm gonna wear these because they feel a little too tight when I put them on, but I think they're gonna loosen and then they'll be perfect. And maybe I should start making my socks a little tighter than I do so that I have that perfect fit into wearing them as opposed to when I try them on. So I'm hoping to finish these this week. As I said, they go fast and um, they're pretty mindless knitting. It's just a feather and fan lace on the top. And so it's um, super easy. And I have these in my kitchen counter crafter uh, owl bag, which I love. I realized I didn't have any Christmas bags. I think I might have to get one next year, like a little Christmas theme bag that I like, but I don't have any Christmas bags. Ugh. Anyways, the other thing I was working on, so as I was trying to finish off my needles, I didn't want to start another big project. So in addition to the socks, I was working on my linen stitch blanket. So I thought I'd bring it to show. I can't remember. It's been a little time since I showed it. I am at... As of today, 52 inches. Do, 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 do. Um, it's roughly 52 inches by 60 inches wide, I think. Um, and this is the linen stitch scrap yarn blanket I'm doing with sock yarn scraps. And what I'm doing is I'm doing one row across and then I'm knotting and having a knotted fringe. This is all the fringe as it's going to be. It's all trimmed. And I've been working on this since... I think 2000, gosh, when did I cast on for it? January, 2016. So I'm at four years guys. And this blanket has got to get done this year. So this is one of my knitting goals for 2020. I am going to finish this the first half of the, well, I'm going to try, I'm definitely going to finish it this year. I'm going to try to finish it in the first six months of this year. I have 20 inches left to go because I want this to be 72 inches because I'm a tall person. I'm 68 at 
I'm 5'8", 68 inches. Um, so I want it to be 72 inches. That means if I want to do it in roughly six months, I need to do approximately an inch a week, which is doable. Um, they're 14. That's roughly 14 rows based on the gauge. Sometimes it's a little more, a little less, depending on the thickness of the fingering weight. Um, which means on average, I need to do two rows a day. Those two rows going one across, one back take approximately a half hour. It is not a fast blanket. There will be, I'm going to calculate how much time I have in this at the end, but there's a lot of time in this blanket. There's a lot of yarn in this blanket, but there's a lot of time. But it's time for it to be done because I have other, other Afghans I want to cast on, but I won't let myself entirely do this. So this is going into the rotation, as I said, the first half of the year. And I planned to try to do it to kind of break it up. Um, the two rows every night, approximately. I can catch up more on the weekends to try to do roughly an inch a week. So yeah, hopefully six months this will be done and I'll, well in six months it'll be too warm to use it but I love the blanket it's very dense it's very thick but it's very you know relatively small I just love it so those are my two whips let's talk about 2019 and I have notes because of course I have notes I have two notes one on my Evernote and then one in writing so in comparison to last year, this year I did 40 projects totaling approximately 17,500 yards. That is significantly up from the last five years. Last two years, I approximately did 10,500 yards. So I am 7,000 yards more this year. Crazy sauce. A lot of that has to do with I've been knitting with fingering weight. A lot of fingering weight and I was doing sweaters, which take a lot. My biggest project um, in terms of yardage was the Granito, and that was 1,800 yards. So it adds up, these sweaters, these fingering weight projects. Um, also, the 40 projects is the most I've done in the last five years that I've been counting. Um, granted, some of them are small, but some of them are not. I ended up doing six hats. 16 pairs of socks. Some of those were shorties. Two of them were for my niece, though one of those was like knee highs, but 16 pairs of socks. One scarf, four shawls, six baby gifts, so that would be baby hats or mitts, four sweaters, all for myself. I did the Granito um, by Hohe Locatelli, the Rintersol by Jennifer Steingast, the Donner by Elizabeth Doherty, all and the Sagi Sagi by, I can't remember. Three of those were fingering weight. One of those was a sport weight, sport DK. And then I also did three other, and that, and mostly I, I counted three, but one of those was all of the um, knitted knockers I did. I counted them as one project, though I did, I don't know, a bunch of them. But in terms of skeins, it was only like two skeins, so I counted them. So. That has me at 40 projects. Of those 40, five of them are charity. Most of those were hats. 17 were gifts were made for other people. 14 were made for me. So between the socks and the sweaters. Um, and then four go into my gift box. Now, of the 2019 Make Nine I did, and I'm gonna show you, I did seven of the nine. Now, here's kind of my... Do, do, do. You can also see this on my Instagram. The ones I didn't do was this. I did had a beanie on here that was a brioche beanie. And then when I was doing it, it was like a bulky brioche. And I decided I didn't like that. So I used the same yarn that I designated for that hat in another project. And that was my mushroom hat, which I haven't worn. I'm going to bring that out. And then the other one was a shawl, the upward shawl. And I plan on doing it. It's actually going to be the first project I cast on in 2020. I just substituted the brioche shawl for that one because I just... I like doing the brioche shawl because I had just done some brioche on my eyeball shawl and so I wanted to keep doing some brioche. So I'm pretty happy. Um, all of that was knit from stash. My Make 2020, which I've also put on, has nine projects and um, Make 9 2020 and those are all from stash too. And the ones that I have, um, I sort of have a picture, but 
a combination of three sweaters, two hats, three shawl, four shawls. And this was all from Stash. So I plan on doing a Ricky hat. I'm going to kind of show this. I know it's bad, but regardless. A Ricky hat. This is the upward shawl I'm going to do. This is another shawl. I have lace weight. Um, these are my three sweaters. The Spectre by Hohi Locatelli. The Ashland um, by Julie Hoover. And the Dripping Honey by Anna Johanna. All of those. Two of the yarns I picked up. The sweater quantities at Rhinebeck. The other one is kind of a fady one I have for my stash. And then I have the Lineate with scraps. The Birds of Prey with yarn. And then Dotted Rays too. Another kind of get rid of a lot of fingering weight. So these are not, these are big projects. So this would use a lot of yardage if I'm able to accomplish all nine. Um, the other kind of goals I had for last year is I wanted to work through my queue and I feel like I did that. I had 17 starting at the beginning of 2019 and I had two remaining at the end that I just added recently and not including the make 20. Now the way I use my queue is it goes into my queue if I have the yarn for it. And I've matched up yarn for my stash for the project. Um, I wanted to continue charity knitting, which I did, uh, though I am down from the previous year. Um, I think I did half as many projects. My fingering blanket, I wanted to do 18 inches. I started at 40. I'm at, I was at 51 at the end of the year, so I only did 11 inches. I did not make the 18, but we already talked about it. It's going to become a priority for 2020. And then some Christmas gifts. I did a few of those. I did a lot of socks for my mom, but not exactly. Um, I didn't make a Christmas gift for my niece, and I, I did do a hat for my sister, but not the full gifts I was explaining. Um, I wanted to complete uh, Christmas ornaments for my tree. I failed at that. I don't think I did any this year. And then um, stash enhancement, I want to do a moratorium for six months. I also did not do that. I bought yarn pretty much every festival I went and with the Joann's run in between. So I did not go six months without buying yarn. In terms of my 2020 goals, I've already talked about the make nine I want to do. And then I want to have 5% less stash than I'm starting with. So that will allow me to buy some yarn. I'm going to be using up yarn, but to end less. So I'm starting in my stash, according to Ravelry, which I'm very good about keeping my stash in there, with 52,000 52, yards. So to end with 5% less, I have to end roughly at 50,000. That's not bad. That's totally doable. Totally doable. Um, I'm actually, that's my goal, but if I could end a little less than that, would be great. Charity knitting, I want to continue. I want to do more hats and then mother bears. I didn't do any mother bears this year, and I have a lot of yarn set aside for it. So I'm going to try to do five hats, five mother bears. Um, more gifts. I want to continue knitting gifts for my family. I'm going to be kind of unspecific per se right now. I have some yarn specifically set aside for my sister because she is allergic to wool. So I have bought some silk yarns and stuff that is for her. So I'm going to try to make that this year. Um, I have some goals I want to make the baby. Um, I have a new niece, Abigail Rose. She was born on um, the night of the last podcast. I forget the date. It's December 22nd, 1st, somewhere around there. Anyway, so I want to do a softie for her as well as a baby blanket because I traditionally do that. And then I want to continue making socks for my mom because I love to make socks and uh, the boyfriend is starting to get too many socks. Complete my linen stitch blanket. And then the other kind of goal I have is I want to podcast a little more often in 2020. I want to try to get 20 podcasts in 2020, which would have me doing a podcast roughly every three weeks. So maybe a little sooner in some of it. So yeah, those are all my goals. Um, pretty happy. Um, pretty happy with my 2019. I feel like I got a lot done. A lot of projects, so many socks. I've never done that many socks. I want to pull up. Um, so with 16 pairs, 16 pairs of socks. I did five last year, seven the year before, 10 the year before that. I've never done 16 pair. Um, and I've never done so much yardage. You know, socks have a fair amount of yardage in them. 
Um, yeah, my stash went up in terms of number of items. Um, and I count each different kind of yarn. So I have more single skeins. I have 158 items up from 137 items last year. And that just means I have more single skeins of yarn because my yardage only about a thousand yards more than last year. So I pretty much replace the yardage that I knit this year. So this year I'm going to try to buy a little less so I can knit a little more from my, my stash. Yeah. What's everybody else's goals? I love listening to people's different stashing and knitting and other crafting goals. I would love to have time to do other crafting, but knitting is pretty much it for me right now. Um, I also have some personal goals that, you know, I've written down that I'm not necessarily going to share here, but I do like, I don't call them resolutions. They're just more goals. I, I like, and I probably do it. I try to do it at least twice a year where I go back to my goals and kind of reevaluate. Basically at the end of 2020, I just want to end up a little, a little more satisfied and a little more happy with myself. You know, it's kind of that the path I'm taking is the path that I want to be on and it's, it's making me happy because happiness is what we have. Anyways, what else to talk about? Sorry, let me check my notes. I love notes. Um, da, da, da. so the big thing is my niece was out here. She was out here for the first time, flew by herself. She's nine. Um, that was interesting. It was an interesting trip to pick her up at Burbank airport. And I had made the decision to have her fly into Burbank once I saw JetBlue had direct flights from Boston because Burbank is a much easier airport for me to get into. Um, LAX is just a nightmare no matter what these days. There's just, it's just a nightmare. It's a giant airport, so much traffic, can't get in and out versus this is a much smaller local airport. It only has 14 gates total, mostly Southwest flights, but then JetBlue has a few flights here and there. So I was picking her up at 10 o'clock at night, the night before. And I got there and um, it was funny, the JetBlue person said she had just tried to call me and I was like, I didn't get a call. She's like, no, it didn't go through. And they ended up having inputted my phone number wrong, but she was just calling to make sure I was coming. I was there in plenty of time. And then what had ended up happening is the flight that was leaving didn't get out on time because there were winds in Burbank and they had to reduce the weight and get some people to volunteer to go from Burbank to LAX to take a flight instead because there's not that many flights. They only had one gate. My niece's plane landed. The other plane wasn't out of the gate. They wouldn't give them another gate. And they were like sitting on the tarmac for an hour. <laughs> and in the meantime, I'm sitting at the gate for an hour because I'm trying to wait to get her. They finally decided to send them to another gate because this JetBlue flight wasn't able to get off I don't know. They were waiting for the fuel to be readjusted because they had to dump some fuel because it's a shorter airport and with the winds. Anyways, so they, that was fine. So there was me and another father waiting to pick up kids and accompany minors. So they gave us a, it was like 1030 at night. They gave us another boarding pass to go to the other terminal because they were actually putting us into a gate um, in the other terminal, which the terminals are right next to each other. Super close. That was fine. So we were walking, walk literally, the, they were, JetBlue is the furthest gate in this airport and they wanted us to go the other end, the furthest way. So it was a little bit of a hike and we get to the other terminal and TSA is closed, just closed, locked up, no way to get in. So we hike back to the terminal one TSA and they tell us, oh, we're totally different TSAs. That one's closed. You can't get in. Okay, but JetBlue told us to pick up our kids from the plane. How are we going to tell them that now we can't get over to the gate because you won't let us in? They're like, yeah, call airport operations and let them know. It's like, okay. Alrighty. I mean, I knew she was there. She was on the plane. She was just hanging out. So this whole debacle from when I got there to when I actually got here was like two and a half hours. And she had landed on time. So... It was crazy. Um, but she got off the plane. We got her. 
Um, her mother had been texting because it was her first time flying alone. She was fine because I knew she would be. And then we had a fun week. We, as I said, alternated some hangout time and just chill time with, uh, we went to Magic Mountain one day and that is a local um, Six Flags. And so roller coasters, she likes roller coasters. It was a super crowded day. We didn't get on many rides at all. The lines were hour, hour and a half each. So I think we went on like five roller coasters. By the time it was getting dark and cold and less people, we went on a roller coaster that basically took my boyfriend and I out. It was an older roller coaster and I am sensitive to begin with. And this one was just jerky and yeah, my stomach went. So we had fun, but definitely a lot of waiting around and not as much riding of roller coasters as I would have liked at all. Oh, my cat's here to say hi. Hi, hey, kitty. It's not like you can hear me talking. Here's Cloudy, my deaf, deaf kitty. Mm, go sit over there. Um, and then we went to Disneyland and that was crowded, but I had a plan for Disneyland. I've been, I've been to Disneyland a lot, but I haven't been in the last few years. Um, but I knew the key to Disneyland when it's crowded is you get your butt there as soon as it opens. Like you are waiting for the rope to drop. So they let you in to Disneyland an hour before they open. And then you can wait for the rope to drop and go into the different lands. And between that and the fast pass, they have this new thing at Disneyland called Max Pass, which lets you get fast passes on your phone. It's extra, totally worth it. With that going early and with the Max Pass, we were able to go on every major ride with a 25 minute or less wait. Most of them we did fast passes for Space Mountain, for It's a Small World, for uh, we went on Big Thunder twice. Um, the new Star Wars Land, which does not have a fast pass, we ended up doing standby. So that was about 25 minutes. Not bad at all. Very cool ride. Very cool land. Unfortunately, we missed the new Resistance ride. It opens like in two weeks. But we were at Disneyland. We got there about, we pulled into the parking garage at like 7 a.m. And we were there till 10 p.m. So it was a very long day. Um, I think we did about 10 and a half miles of walking that day, going back and forth. Cause you, with fast passes, you, you're, you're not just going in one lane, doing all the rides and going kind of walking back and forth, but it was good. It was fun. We saw everything. We had a good time. Um, my niece is in that, that age where pictures are not her thing. <laughs> she doesn't smile, but we did wait in um, one of the areas where they had Chewy, and we waited probably 20, 25 minutes to have a picture with Chewy, which was her request, and she actually smiled. And I posted that on Instagram. So that was great um, to do that. And then on New Year's Day, we went to the Rose Bowl Parade, which is something I've never done. We did not camp out. I had entertained it, but I didn't I didn't think we needed to make that big of a deal of it in the end. And so instead what we did is we got up early and we took the train about 7.15, one of the local stops we could drive over and took the gold line into the second half of the parade route. And then we got there, I don't know, about eight o'clock and the parade um, starts at eight where it is. And then where we were at gets there about nine, 10. So we were waiting about an hour and we were able to get a great spot on a corner able to see everything super close and yeah, we saw the Rose Bowl parade. Um, so that was fun. I'm just watching her because my linen stitch blanket is not in its bag and I'm going to take it away so that she doesn't sit on it. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And then, um, flying back, she had another kind of Apparently winds are a problem in Burbank. And so when she was flying out, she was taking like the first flight back, another direct to Boston. They had winds again. And so what they decided to do, rather they initially asked and offered some people first class upgrade on flights out of LAX. And a few people took that, but then they still needed to cut some more weight uh, because basically it's a shorter runway there. So if there's any kind of headwinds, they need to make sure that they're below weight to take off. Instead, they decided to put less fuel in so they could take everybody, but then they had to stop in Las Vegas to refuel. And so what should have been a direct 
Um, ended up getting into Boston two hours later with them having a hour plus, hour and a half stop in Vegas to refuel. And then when I went back and looked at the, because you can find all the information for previous flights, and I kind of was looking at it, and this is something that they've had to do. It's probably something they have to do pretty frequently in the winter, I think, um, where they just go to Albuquerque or Vegas or something and refuel. So they go very light fuel to get out of Burbank and then refuel those larger airports with the longer runways that even if they had weather issues, they have long runways, not a big deal. I'm not carrying things. Okay, Kitty. Uh, I'll see if she wants, apparently wants to sit in my lap, which is not very, not something she does very often. So yeah, so that was good. Um, my niece is doing good. Uh, she did have a little bout of jaundice, so she was in the hospital overnight, but that's been taken care of. Um, other than that, I'm prepping. As I said, today I'm going to cast on for my first 2020 Make 9. It's going to be one of the shawls, I think. And then I have some upcoming travels. In two weeks, I'll be heading to Cleveland to see one of my oldest friends. Um, who I haven't seen in a little bit. Um, there's a chance now we may go to a soccer game in Lyon, Mexico. Their local soccer team, LAFC, um, is in a international tournament and they play a game in Lyon, Mexico. And so we are thinking of going to that. However, that, co that game coincides with the same week. That's like games on a Tuesday, I think. And that following weekend is Stitches West. So I'm not sure. I'm still planning on going to Sitges West, but I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I was thinking of going to Sitges West on Thursday night, and now I think I may be going on Friday night if we end up going to Mexico. Because in theory, I have to work at some point during that week. In theory. Unless I decide to take the week off. But I have some other big vacation plans coming up with Morocco in April, which I'm all booked. Just booked our Air Force yesterday on Royal Air Maroc, which was... Not a nightmare but I appreciate that credit cards do fraud checks I do um, but it is a pain in the butt when it doesn't go right so I had bought the first of my brother's ticket because we were on separate tickets because he's flying um, what I've decided to do is I'm gonna fly out the day or two before join him in Boston we'll take the same flight into Mar into Casablanca but then on the way back he'll be going to Boston and I'll be going to LA um, so I booked two separate tickets First ticket his goes through just fine, and then I was buying a second one, and it didn't go through. It was declined, which was fine. Have the phone. If you ever do, you get text messages. Was this you? Yes. That wasn't sufficient like it normally is to redo it. No, you have to call us with this case number. I called. Talk to the guy. Yes, this is me. Yes, you know, blah, 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 confirm, whatever. It went through the second time. But then I continued to get calls all day saying, call us for fraud check again. And I was like, I just talked to you guys not that long ago. So in the afternoon I called back and basically the first guy hadn't cleared everything like he should have. So I had to go through this whole check again, answer the same questions. And it's not that it's a bad thing, but it's just annoying. Um, it's just annoying, especially because I have to speak slowly. You're not dealing with a native English speaker. I was very obviously talking in both occasions to some type of call center somewhere else in the world and they have to follow their script. And if you try to like hurry it up, it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, you have to wait for them to ask the questions, answer the questions in order, you know, be, yeah. So I appreciate the fraud protection, but it was a pain in the butt to have to do it twice, to call the call center twice. But hopefully it's all just taken care of and I will put a um, I'll put a travel alert before I actually go. So that is in um, April. And then the only other thing I have on right now is San Diego Comic-Con in July, as well as Zombie Apocalypse in June. So shaping up to be another fun year. Fun year. I think that's all I have for you. I'm going to go enjoy my day. Um, I hope everybody else is having a wonderful, wonderful day. And... Um, to have a great beginning to 2020. It's 2020. We're not in a new decade though. Technically the new decade starts in 2021. I read that on Instagram from somebody. Anyways, um, that's it. 
I hope everyone has a wonderful day. That's a wrap from Hollywood where fantasy meets fiber and dreams are knit. Bye everybody.